Hi everyone, welcome back. In my previous video, we connected our ESP to factory I.O. via Modbus and guess it was fun doing that. In this video, we will move to a different level by connecting the ESP to one of the powerful industrial HMI or SCADA software called Intouch SCADA. This way, we will be able to design lovely HMI for our projects, just as we have here. Without much ado, let's look at the items we will need to create projects just like this. Kindly subscribe if you've not done that already and also press on the notification bell. This way you will always be notified whenever I upload new video. Okay, now let's look at the items we will need for this project. For hardware, we will be needing an ESP just as we used in the previous tutorial. We also need an infrared proximity sensor. We will need a transistor that we'll be using to drive our motor. We will need a resistor, LED, DC motor, a breadboard where we'll be connecting all our devices and then a diode for protection. For software, we will need the open PLC editor. We will need Intouch SCADA software and then we will need the CAP server software we can either use the version 6 or version 5, but I will be using version 6. I'll provide the links below so that you'll be able to get all these softwares. Okay, great. Now let's look at our circuit that we'll be using in this project. So for our circuitry, this is how the setup is going to be like. We will need a proximity sensor. We will need a transistor that is going to drive our motor. We will need an LED and then a current limiting resistor. They will all be connected to the... ESP and the idea or the concept is that when the motor begins to rotate we will have a lever that will be going in front of the proximity sensor within every revolution and we should be able to count the number of revolution of the motor so this is just a demonstration for the implementation that we'll be doing between open PLC and then interscader now getting the understanding and how the wiring is going to be like, let's look at the actual setup on our breadboard. Okay, now this is our breadboard setup. We have our ESP, we have our proximity sensor, LED and transistor. We have our motor with the lever. Now let's look at our code. So this is the exact code that we used in the previous tutorial. With just a little modification, I will point out the modification quickly. Okay, so I saved it with a different name. So ESP underscore HMI and then on the main circuit we have the exact same pen just that for the PV which is the set values we're using a fixed value for it I created a variable so you create a variable called count max and because we will be writing to it via the mod bus I set it as an output and then the initial value I set it at 20 and then you assign that value to this section of the counter the next change is the pause right now because we are using a physical hardware for the sensor we need to specify that the sensor is an input but not the output because we will not be writing from the mod bus so i change this to input so it's ix 0, .0 which is pin number four on the esp so that one was also changed and then I guess the rest remains the same. The motor is assigned to 0 0.3, the reset and then the start, sorry, the reset and then the stop is also assigned. And then we have the start assigned to 0 0.2 output. We'll be writing to them via the mod bus. Okay, great. So with these changes made, we can now click on load so that we can download this into our ESP. Okay. So we have the interface, so with the same setup, with the ESP, and then the COM port, and then the Wi-Fi credential, and then IP address for the ESP. I can click on the download to start the download. Okay, great. So with the download done, let's move to the CAP server to configure it to connect to our ESP. Okay, so the link to the CAP server software is provided below. Look for it, download it and then the installation pretty straightforward so after installing you have this icon click on it to start i'll also provide a video link so that you can go to my previous tutorial to look at how the cap server is installed and configured okay so we have the cap server installed 
first we need to create a project so i go to file and then i go to new to create a new one if this is your first time it will come directly and then you can just go ahead right so we can see that a new project is created now this is the project tree and then we can see we are offline okay so to add a new device we have to go to connectivity and then we click on click to add channel right our protocol that we'll be using is modbus tcp so we go we select modbus tcp and then we move to next we can give it a channel name so we can say esp underscore hmi we go to next we leave here as such next adapter default we leave here as such next and then we click on finish okay so our channel is created the next we need to add our device so we click on click to add device we can give it a device name or we leave it as such device one and then we move to next our protocol is modbus so we move to next and then here we need to provide the ip address of the esp in my case is 192.68.8. You move to nest. Nest. And then you click on finish. Now our device is created now. So now we click on it to add the tags. The tags are basically what we created in the open PLC. Our first digital tag is the start button. So we create start description. You can add anything or leave it as such. Okay. So the address is basically the Modbus address, not the address in the open PLC. So let's say, for instance, if I make a mistake and then I type in the open PLC address and I click on OK, it will then give me this help file. I can click yes to just launch the help file. It will then open this help file and give me the address range of the modbus we can see that for output calls it ranges between five zeros one up to this particular number and then inputs this is the address range and then the internal registers are within the three hundred thousand and one and then the holding address register is within four hundred thousand and one so basically these are the address range that we need to map to our open PLC addresses okay so if I delete this and then I go to this it's giving me address range my first one from the manual is supposed to be a call and it's a boo so I can select this one okay and then I need to delete so my first address 0, .0, .0 is going to be this and then the type is a boo so I need to select a boo for this and then when you are done you click OK and then my first tag is created need to repeat this for all the outputs to add the next address you right click and go new tag so i'll stop see all the four outputs boolean has been added now we need to add the input which is the sensor so we do the same this is an input so the address is different and put the range is between this hundred thousand and one okay so we are done with the boolean let's now add our holding registers so I right click again we tag and then we add our counter value which is underscore var address is the holding register and from the manual holding register starts from 400,000 and we need a wet so this is our first which is counter var data type is supposed to be a wet and then you click OK. The next is our count max. Address is also a word. Great. So we've been able to add all our tags now. 
now let's meet in the next section where i will show you how to test the tags and also do your design in interface interface thank you for watching bye bye